Now that we've seen how to build a basic program in jQuery, now we'll go a little bit more in depth and look at jQuery selectors. Selectors are perhaps the most widely used aspect, maybe even the most important aspect of jQuery because they allow you to select any object or tag regardless of which browser environment your jQuery script is running in. So selectors are quite important. There's a lot of documentation, probably more than you'd want to read through in one sitting on selectors on the jQuery site. The best way to understand them is going to be to do a simple example. Let's start with an empty HTML5 page. The only things that have been added are the CSS just for general look and feel, which will come into play as we go along and do more examples, and the actual jQuery library right here. Let's start out by creating a simple ordered list in the body of the document here, and we'll put five list items in there. At the end of the page, we'll actually set up jQuery to run the way we did before. Recall that the dollar sign is used. It turns out that this is shorthand. If you didn't want to use it, you could write jQuery in full and then call the document ready event. So writing jQuery in full is equivalent to using the dollar sign shorthand that you will commonly see if you are a developer and you're working on some jQuery code that was written by somebody else. Those two formats are completely interchangeable. There are also cases where we'll need to be careful about which name we're using when running jQuery in no conflict mode, but that we'll talk about later. For now, let's stick to the shorthand, the dollar sign, because that's the one that's most commonly used. So using the same shorthand, we're going to do a jQuery selector. Now the selector is actually the statement that goes in these quotes here. Here, there's not really a selector string because the, the entire document is what's being used by jQuery. But a selector is a string that's used to select a single element or a group of elements. The easiest way to understand this is by doing an actual example. For this selector, let's select li. Now, what this is going to do is select all of the li elements on this entire page here. And what we're going to do with those, once we've selected all of them, is set the text to a specific value. Now, since we are selecting all of these, and there are five list items, li's, on this page here, this statement, this is repeating text, will actually get repeated five different times. So let's run this and see what happens. There, the list item was filled in with the same sentence that we typed in to the selector five different times. Okay, let's go back and make this example a little bit more interesting. We demonstrated that one type of selector is to just select the type of tag. In this first case, the type of tag was li for list item. We can also select by other attributes, such as class. Let's add a class of other to these last two tags right here. So now, if we want to choose a class, jQuery provides a shorthand for doing that. We can put dot other, which is the way of doing a class selector. And we're going to set in the first example, we set the text property, which is the text that appears between the start and end tag. Now let's do the HTML property. And this allows us to actually set HTML that appears between the start and end tag. And we'll show what that distinction looks like in a second. Write this text, put an EM, may appear more than once. Okay, so when this script runs, the first thing that will happen is it'll set all five of these to say this is repeating text. 
but then the next statement will run and that will set these last two to have this HTML in place of that text. Here's what that looks like. You'll notice that HTML gets inserted into these last two elements here. Now, if we had used the text function here instead of the HTML, here's what would have happened. These EM tags are now escaped and this appears as plain text. There's another type of selector that's commonly used, and that is the ID selector. IDs are used in general to uniquely identify each element on the page. So for example, this element here might have an ID of Let's give that an ID of test 5. This would have to have a different ID in order to not violate the HTML5 specification, such as test 1. The important thing is that the ID uniquely identify the element. For more information, check out the HTML course. So if we want to select an element by ID, we use this pound sign right here, and then we put in the value that corresponds to the ID. So let's put HTML in this time and say this text does not repeat. And the reason that doesn't repeat, obviously, is because we're only specifying this to be written in for one of the IDs. Recall that this first line executes and sets all five of them to this is repeating text. Then the next statement only sets the last two values. And this final one just sets the last value because the ID matches this one up here. Let's see it run. There, the last value was set with the HTML, just like we specified. It's not a really good practice to do so, but there's no reason why we can't mix ways of referencing jQuery. So if we wanted to, we could type something like this. We're selecting just the first ID over here. So this is the tag that will be changed by this statement here, which runs last. So we've seen a few selectors, and as we've seen, mixing and matching between writing jQuery and the dollar sign is probably not a very good practice. So we should keep these all as dollar signs.